Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this Warcry deep dive video, we'll be taking a look at the Untamed Beasts. Here's our Untamed Beasts, one of the original warbands in Warcry, and certainly one of my favourites. I think these are brilliant, the sculpts are fantastic, and they're just great to paint. And in this video, we'll be going through all their abilities and the individual fighters and fighter cards, looking at all their stats and exactly what each of them can do in the game. And I got these from the Untamed Beast box set, where you'll find all the cards as well as the models. Originally, they came in the first Warcry starter set, but I started Warcry quite late, so I wasn't lucky enough to get hold of this one. You can also find all the abilities and the fighter cards in the Warcry supplement Agents of Chaos book. And so you can see it's got all the abilities laid out there as well as an introduction to the warband and also the fighter cards and fighter types available for them. Before we get started on the abilities and cards, let's find out a little bit about the Untamed Beasts and how they fit in with the world of Warcry. Howling and roaring in praise to the Dark Gods, the Untamed Beasts tear across the plains with boundless ferocity. In all the realms, there are few worshippers of chaos as savage as these veteran hunters. To the Untamed Beasts, there is only one truth. All that is civilised and ordered is naught but prey. These nomadic hunters roam the jagged savannah of Gur, and only the most brutal of predators could survive there. The Untamed Beasts assuredly fall into that category. The Untamed Beasts worship Chaos as the devourer of existence. They believe that everything forged by mortal kind, from their merest of metal dirks to the grander city walls, is a meaningless foible destined to perish in the maw of this rapacious deity. The Untamed Beasts hunt predatory creatures alone, for they consider this the truest test of their skills. They wield weapons crafted from the claws and fangs of these animals and erect temporary camps from their hides and bones. The Heart Eaters who lead the hunts are hulking chieftains who have devoured the organs of monsters and been bolstered by their primal essence. The honour of both commencing and concluding a kill, however, belongs to the first fangs and these are the keenest eyes of the untamed beasts whose javelins can bring down even the mightiest predators. Eager plains runners charge alongside grizzled prey takers, veteran warriors who have slain mighty beasts, and in doing so, earned the right to choose for themselves a name. But perhaps the most honoured of the untamed beasts are the beast speakers. These shamans are said to commune with the devourer of existence itself, and they direct the predators bound into service by the untamed beasts, the fierce rock tusk prowlers chief amongst them. So that's just a brief introduction to the Untamed Beasts. So now let's start taking a look at the fighters individually, looking at the fighter cards and abilities. And we'll start with the leader of the Untamed Beasts, the Heart Eater. And the Heart Eater is going to come in at 180 points. And we can see he's got the leader room mark and the Untamed Beast faction room mark. He's got a movement of five, toughness four, and can take 20 wounds. And he's just got the one weapon option. So this is this big axe made from the jaw of some beast which has got a range of one he can make four attacks strength four and he's going to deal two on an, on a normal hit and five on a critical hit so for 180 points nice movement a fair amount of damage he can take he's not that strong and he's not that tough but he's certainly going to dish out some damage with that two to five but let's have a look at the abilities that he can use and he's got that one leader ability before we look at that there's two that he can use because he's got the faction room mark for the Untamed Beast. And any of the fighters with that room mark can also use the two faction abilities. And so I'll go through them here for the Heart Eater. And then as we go through all the different fighters, just note that they can all use the double Savage Fury and the quad Unleash the Beast. So long as they've got that faction room mark. So let's start with the double, which is called Savage Fury. And here... We add one to the move characteristic of this fighter for the next move action they make this activation and add one to the attacks characteristic of the next attack action they make this activation. So as doubles go, this is pretty good. Adding one to a move characteristic that's already five for the Heart Eater and one to attack which is already four 
is really great. So we can get a movement six and make five attacks. So this isn't bad for a double. There's a really good chance you can get three doubles per round. So you could apply that double to three different fighters if you wanted to. So that's a really good ability that they can all use as long as they've got the room mark. But they've also got this great quad called Unleash the Beast. And here, until the end of the battle round, add half the value of this ability, rounding up to both the attacks and strength characteristics of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. And so this is really great as well. You know, if this is a six, you can add three to both attack and strength. So this would make this um, heart eater here, adding three to his four would be seven attacks. Strength seven, that's crazy. He's gonna do a huge amount of damage with those seven rolls and with a two or five on a crit, it's just going to put out a lot of punishment. So a really nice quad there and a really nice double and they can all use it. But now let's look at the ability that only the leader can use with the leader room mark, which is a double called All Out Attack. A fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. This fighter makes a bonus move action or a bonus attack action. So as the rounds go on, or even early on in the game, if this guy takes someone out in one of his actions, he can get a, with just a double, get a bonus move or a bonus attack. So a really nice double there. And it's interesting to see that this leader ability doesn't wear off onto other fighters. This is all about the leader getting that kill, getting that bonus attack so he can do more damage. So this really plays into the narrative of the Untamed Beast and them going, going it alone when they're in the hunt and wanting to get that glory on the battlefield. Now we're on to the next fighter, which is the First Fang. And this is another great model. I think all the sculpts in this warband are, are brilliant. I think the Heart Eater is fantastic, but this is another contender here. Really great model. And he's gonna come in as a fighter at 140 points. He's got the Faction room mark and one room mark for an ability we haven't seen yet. He's got a movement of four, toughness four, and can take 15 wounds. So he's not as fast as the leader here, but he does have two weapon options. And his first one has a range of eight, so it's up to eight, and he can make two attacks, strength four, dealing two to five on a crit. So that isn't bad for a range of eight, that's pretty good. You know, two attacks doesn't seem a lot, but when you can keep your distance, that isn't bad at all. But he's got this other one if you get up close, he's got his ax, again made from a jaw of a beast, with a range of one, and this time it's three attacks, strength four, dealing one to four on a crit. So he's not gonna do a huge amount of damage there, but it's the ability that I think makes this guy interesting. So let's take a look at that next. So our first Fang has the Brute Room Mark. So he can get access to the triple called Harpoon Snag. And this fighter makes a bonus attack action. After that attack action, the fighter targeted by that attack action makes a bonus move action directly towards this fighter as if they were jumping a number of inches equal to the value of this ability. So this is gonna come in into play with that range weapon, so up to eight inches away, and you get the bonus attack action, which is nice, but then after that, you drag that fighter towards you a number of inches equal to the value of the ability. So you're gonna want, this is gonna to wanna to be a high value, I guess. Um, it doesn't really matter because you can go up to eight. So it could be that harpoon can still be used at one inch away or anything up to eight. So really quite interesting ability that if you wanna drag a player to who's trying to maybe stay out of the fray a little bit or trying to escape, you can keep them in the fight. But this guy can also use that double Savage Fury and the quad Unleash the Beast that we went through earlier. And now we're on to our third fighter, which is the Beast Speaker. And this is the Shaman of the Warband, but no magical abilities other than that ability to speak to beasts, which I think is really cool. And for 125 points, this one's gonna come with a movement of five, and she's got a toughness of four, and can take 15 wounds. We've got a room mark that we haven't seen yet, and the faction room mark. So there's gonna be one ability we haven't read yet. Then we've got two weapon options. And now one is this like whip, which has got a maximum range of four. So you can go up to four and you can make four attacks, strength four. You're only dealing one to two on a crit here though. So the damage on this isn't like gonna be a lot at all. But if you get up close, he's also got this blade, which is a range of one, three attacks, strength four, dealing one to four on a crit. But again, just like that one we saw with the first Fang, the ability is really gonna make this worthwhile. And you pair this one up 
with the beast that we're going to see in a second. But let's have a look at the ability first. So our beast speaker has the agile rune mark and that gives her the double beast master ability where we pick a visible friendly fighter with the beast rune mark within four inches of this fighter. That fighter then makes a bonus attack action. So this is really needs to be paired up. You have to uh, pair up the beast speaker with the rock tusk prowler, which we're going to look at in a second. And that's what this, uh, this is when this ability is going to come to life. But she can also use the double savage fury and the quad unleash the beast if she wants to. So whenever I put this one, I always think of the beast speaker and the rock tusk prowler really is one choice and they, they come as a pair, but really to make unlock this ability and make it work, then you need both of them. And here's the Rock Tusk Prowler, which comes in at 180 points. So putting these two together is going to be 305 in total. You don't have to, but if you want to make use of that ability, they do need to come together. But for this one, 180 points on its own. It's got a movement of 8. Toughness 4 can take 20 room, uh, wounds. We've got that Beast Rune Mark and the Faction Rune Mark. And then the weapon, this is going to be all claws and fangs coming at the enemy with 4 attacks, strength 4 dealing two to five on a crit. So very similar to the Heart Eater there, and even a, a little bit close to the first Fang in the amount of damage we could potentially put out with this one with two to five on a crit. But then it's that ability, because it's got the Beast Rune Mark, we can pair it up with a Beast Speaker and get access to that double Beast Master. So if you can make a bonus attack with this one, and say you, do, you could potentially do three attack actions in one turn or one activation of this fighter, that's going to be 12 dice rolling at a strength four, dealing two to five on a crit, which is no joke. That's going to put out some serious punishment. And again, you can use double Savage Fury or quad unleash the beast with this one too. Next, we've got the Prey Taker with Fanged Axe. And this is coming in at 105 points. Got movement four, toughness four, can take 10 wounds. And with no extra room marks, only the faction room mark, there's going to be no new abilities here. For the weapon, we've got range of one, three attacks, strength four, and we're going to deal two to four on a crit here. So this isn't too bad, but that movement four is okay. Toughness four and strength four is all right. Dealing two to four isn't too bad at all with three attacks. But it would be nice if we got an extra ability here, but they can use that double savage fury and the quad unleash the beast if they want to. Next, we've got the Prey Taker with Sawtooth Blade. And this is again 105 points. The same movement for toughness four and 10 wounds. The weapon option here is a range of one. We can make four attacks. Strength three though, dealing two to four on a crit. So we can make an extra attack here, one more than the Prey Taker with Fanged Axe, but the strength is lower. Instead of four, this is only a three. Uh, but you're still going to do the same damage of two to four. So I like having them both in the warband. I think that's pretty, you know, mixes it up a bit. They're both great looking models. I think they look really awesome. And it's cool to have some different weapons in there as well. Nice to roll four dice, but uh, strength three, you know, maybe you want to go for the other one and have two of those instead, making it, you know, the strength four, but only rolling three attacks. So it's up to you. But with the abilities, again, no extra room marks. So we're just going to get that double Savage Fury or quad Unleash the Beast. Now we're on to our final fighter type, but we've got three fighters in different poses that come with this one. And it's 55 points altogether. And this is the Planes Runner. So we get three Planes Runners. And at 55 points, you get a movement five, which isn't bad for that such a low point cost. You get a toughness three and they could take eight wounds. And weapons, it's a range of one, making three attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. So for 55 points, I don't think it's bad at all to get that movement of five. Everything else is as you would expect, all pretty low. No extra abilities though, so we're only going to be able to use that double Savage Fury or unleash the beast with these planes runners. But I think for such a low cost, it's really great to have some of these in the warband and being able to use that double Savage Fury is going to make their movement 6 and it's going to make their attack characteristic 4. So for a 55 pointer being able to really make use of that double, I think it's really going to add some value to these guys for sure. Um, and sometimes it's good to have less options. So, you know, less abilities is sometimes a good thing, especially when you play, if you like playing narratively like me, playing into how these guys work, just using those abilities 
on the Untamed Beast card. I think it's plenty for them and it's certainly really fun and not having to keep referring to the card once you get to know these abilities makes the game just that much quicker and more immersive to play. But if we do want to bring in some more abilities we do have the universal abilities that any of the warbands can use and for these guys you know, I like to use on a lot of the warbands the Onslaught one and sometimes the Rush as well. But for these we don't need it because we've got the Savage Fury. So from the Universal ones, I think it's really cool to use the Triple Inspiring Presence. And I think this one is really great when you're playing with the Heart Eater. And if you're close with your Rock Tusk Prowler, I think that's a really good combo to use. And with this Inspiring Presence, you pick a friendly fighter that has not activated yet this battle round and that is within six inches of this fighter. You can activate that fighter immediately after the activation of this fighter ends. So this is really great. You can then prevent your opponent activating straight away and you can come in with another fighter. So I think this triple is really good. I think it works really well with the Untamed Beast. So out of all of the Universal ones, that's the one I think I would pick for them. So there we go, there's our Untamed Beasts. I think these are a brilliant warband. One of the originals is always fun, but to come out with such a great looking warband in the core set, I think was fantastic and I really like these. But I'd love to know what you think about them. So let me know in the comment section below and what's your favorite tactic to use when playing them. And if you do like the look of these, you don't have them yet, then you can pick up the box set that's got all the cards for the fighter cards and abilities included. And I'll put a link in the description to Element Games. The RRP is £30, but at the moment, Element Games is selling them for £25.50 here in the UK. And so that link will be an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. You can save that money and also support the channel because I get a small commission for every sale made through it. So if you do choose to do that, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. If you like these deep dive videos, and I've got lots of others in the playlist that I'll link to at the end of this video. I think we're up to 27 now, and I'm just working my way through all the original warbands, and then I'll keep going with all the Age of Sigma ones. I've done a bunch of them already. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. It'll be great to see you there.